Good evening. We've missed you. <laughs> Welcome to the 46th Toronto International Film Festival. Welcome to all of you. We are thrilled to see you here. It's been a minute, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, it's great to be back here in Roy Thompson Hall, and we want to thank all of you for helping us to get this all started. As you join us today, we encourage you to reflect on the land that we're on and its history. This is sacred land where we gather today, and it's been the site of human activity for 15,000 years. We're located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat, and the Haudenosaunee. This territory is within the lands that are protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, and it's home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people, and we are so grateful to be here working and sharing this land. Cinema lovers from all over the globe travel to Toronto in order to experience the most outstanding films in the world. And yes, traveling over these last 18 months has not been easy, so we are especially thankful to be here with you, our wonderful TIFF audience at Roy Thompson Hall. <laughs> TIFF's audience is a combination of film lovers, all equal in their love for and curiosity about cinema, and its ability to transform the way we see the world. Each year, you, our audience, you show up to discover the latest from the world's best filmmakers. You're here for the actors that light up the screen, the artists who challenge us from every corner of the world, and the stories that transform how we look at life, each other, and ourselves. Across every genre, we'll see stories told of ordinary and extraordinary lives. We are proud to bring these films to audiences in Toronto. TIFF and this city work hand in hand in every year, and their partnership consistently reveals the welcoming, generous, and innovative sp spirit of this city, and that's Toronto. Thank you to our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and our major public supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. We would also like to acknowledge our major industry partners, Ontario Creates, and again, Telefilm Canada. At TIFF, we talk about the power of film to transform the way we see the world. But we also know that not every story gets told. So this week we launched Every Story, a fund to support diversity, equity, and inclusion in film. A very special thank you. A very special thank you to NBC Universal, our founding fund partner who will match any donation made to every story. We offer a heartfelt thank you to our wonderful, dedicated board of directors and to our tireless chair, Jennifer Torrey. Thank you to our generous donors, partners, and members for supporting TIFF during our annual festival and year-round at our home, Tifa Lightbox. Tonight we also want to acknowledge two longtime TIFF team members who passed away over the past year. Dimitri Epides was a pure cinephile and a lifelong champion of the artists who opened our eyes to new ways of seeing. For over 30 years, he brought films mostly from Europe and Asia to Toronto, and he shocked us sometimes with the visions of filmmakers who've become regulars here. Jennifer Barkin was the secret soul of our festival. Working as a coordinator and manager in festival programming, she was the glue that brought all the pieces together, and she did it all tirelessly. 
Jennifer also programmed for our TIFF Kids Festival and later Festival Street. We will miss Jennifer and Dimitri always. The next 10 days will be filled with wonderful films and punctuated by simple, meaningful moments. And that is what makes Steve a unique going experience. Whether it's Ben Platt melting us with his magical voice, legendary Abenaki filmmaker, Alan Isabomsuin, honoring audiences with a retrospective of her career. Hearing your favorite director or actor talk about their craft or enjoying an animated discussion at TIFF's industry conference. I can promise that this year, everyone will have a special TIFF moment that will stay with you. Before we introduce the opening night film, I would like to acknowledge the immeasurable contribution of the founders of the Toronto International Film Festival, Bill Marshall, Dusty Cole, and Hank van der Kolk. Without this group of determined entrepreneurs, these amazing gents, we wouldn't be here today, so thank you. The province of Ontario is a valued and longtime supporter, helping to make TIFF happen each and every year, especially through key funding support received from Ontario Creates, the Ontario Arts Council, the Reconnect Festivals and Events Program, and the Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund. As such, we're truly delighted to welcome the province of Ontario tonight for this evening's screening. Please join me in welcoming an avid and outspoken champion of the arts and uh, an incredible woman, the Honorable Lisa McLeod, Ontario Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industries to the stage. Thank Lisa. You. Thank you. Well, hello everyone. So I'm 46 years old. And like everybody, I haven't had a birthday party in 18 months. And it occurs to me that tonight is TIFF's 46th birthday. And since they weren't able to have a proper 45th, I thought we could all wish them tonight a happy birthday. So before I get started, at the count of three, will you join me in wishing TIFF a happy birthday? Will you? You're way too quiet. You will? Okay. So on the count of three, we're going to yell out happy birthday, TIFF. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Tiff. Hey, it was a long time coming. It has been an incredibly difficult 18 months for the sectors that I represent here in Ontario in heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries. You know, pre-pandemic, we boasted about this spectacular double bottom line. We drove $75 billion in economic activity, which was larger than agriculture, mining, and forestry put together, larger than the GDP of Manitoba, and larger than the GDP of most countries. But yeah, I love it, because guess what? We aren't just an economic driver, we're also the reason we love to live where we live, whether that's in Toronto, the city I'm from, the city of Ottawa, or any other point in between in this great province. We represent culture, the arts. We represent sports and recreation, hospitality and tourism. Who has a favorite restaurant that they're finally glad they got to go to? I know you all do. And that type of cultural fabric, the society that we live in, that's also what this ministry drives, and that's why it's so important for us to be here together tonight. Now, Cameron and Joanna, I want to congratulate you for your resilience, your efforts, and we remained in constant contact during the last 18 months. And I knew from day one that uh, no matter what happened, TIFF would stand strong and would continue to be here to support all of the Canadian arts and culture sectors because of your drive and your commitment. And here we are on your 46th birthday. Exactly. And Cameron mentioned the, uh, the supports that he receives from my ministry, whether it's the Reconnect Festival and Event Program, Ontario Cultural uh, Events and, and uh, a a Foundation Fund, uh, through Ontario Crates and the Ontario Arts Council. And this year we're, we're pleased to provide them $1.7 million so they can continue to have this hybrid event. But I got to tell you, as much as I love Ontario Place and I'm revitalizing it as the minister responsible, and it's great to have a drive in and drive through uh, opportunity there, it's so much better to be back here. Roy Thompson Hall, isn't it? 
And I'm really excited that there's going to be some Ontario productions, Oscar Peterson, of course, and Lakewood. But tonight we're here for uh, Evan and, uh, and all of those uh, that are going to be here to support this incredible movie. And I, I got to say, in, in reading about it and, and thinking about it, and as a mental health advocate myself, um, Evan Hansen is about soul searching. Um, it is profound. It's, it's thinking about coming of age and, and how we talk. And I know that it's, it's a big Broadway musical, but wouldn't it be great if we could all just take the lessons that are learned there and really look at other moms and dads and, and, uh, and, and those of us who are raising children to really make sure that our children are resilient post-COVID-19 and think of films like this, which are so profound and, and wish everyone well. And I have to say, and I'm gonna conclude now because I've gone on too long and I do have an Air Canada flight to get back to in Ottawa, but I wanted to say, um, as Evan Hansen said, today's gonna be an amazing day. And I'm not gonna quote him on here's why, but I am gonna say to all of you, because we're back, it's great to be here with all of you. I hope you enjoy the festival. Congratulations to both of you, Cameron and, and, uh, and Joanna, and to all of the people that have made this happen. Next year, number 47, I promise, is going to be even bigger and better. Have a great day, everyone. We are also happy to welcome an honorary member of the TIFF family to the stage tonight. We could not put on our festival without the support of our municipal government partner the City of Toronto, and the tireless efforts of Mayor John Tory. <laughs> in, a <laughs> in a year when we needed him most, Mayor Tory did everything in his power to support TIFF. He has been a true champion of the festival, and we are so grateful for his support. Everyone from our Mayor's office, our City of Toronto councillors, their staff, the team, the team from the City's Economic Development and Culture Division, Transportation Services, the TTC, Toronto Police, and beyond, all are critically important in helping to make TIFF a success each year and every year for the enjoyment of both Torontonians and visitors alike. Thank you for all you do. Please join me in welcoming a very dear friend of TIFF, His Worship John Tory, Mayor of Toronto, to the stage. Thank you. After that, Joanna, I have nothing to say, but um, <laughs> I, I, thank you uh, to you too. Uh, and, and I'll add my sister into that. I'm so proud of her. She's the chair of TIFF. It seems like a long way from the days when she used to chase me around the house with a hairbrush, uh, accusing me <laughs> of, uh, of teasing her, which was unfounded allegations. But, you know, TIFF is something that it's easy to be proud of and easy to support because it is so important to the city. And I think it's been especially important. It is especially important uh, in a year like this uh, when we've just been through uh, the pandemic. We haven't been able to do the things that we enjoy. Uh, be, being together, whether it's out on the street, uh, awaiting uh, some of the uh, people who grace us with their presence in town during TIFF, or being inside here watching movies together, uh, there were simpler things than that that we treasure so much, being with family and so on, that we, we just couldn't do for so long. And so I'm so happy that they had the courage and the gumption, because uh, they talked with me about it and uh, many others in the spring, to say we're going to move ahead and do uh, TIFF and it's going to be different than last year and that we're moving ourselves back to what I just uh, said on the red carpet was the big enchilada that we'll have back next year. But, but uh, these two leaders, we're so blessed to have them uh, as, as a part of the sort of cultural fabric of our city. And film, you know, film is so important uh, to Toronto. Um, it's, tr it's important in the production end where we're doing as much as we've ever done and, and that brings so many talented people to the city but they join all the talented people that are here. If you went abroad, and some of you I'm sure have been abroad, but I end up talking about the film industry to promote this as a place to produce movies and heard what people say about our talented people that produce films here and that to perform every job uh, in the production of, of films here, you'd be very proud of that. And of course, everywhere I go uh, representing the city and trying to attract investment and jobs, the one thing they know, there's several things they know more than you might think about Toronto, they know about TIFF. And it's something to be extremely proud of. And it's to be proud of because it's the People's Film Festival. It brings people together.
together. It celebrates artistry, including Canadian artistry, which is very important. And I think all of those things are um, to be uh, to be celebrated, whether it's year 46 or year 146, because I won't be around for that, but we'll, uh, we'll get there. So I've written, I actually wrote myself, and sometimes people write things for you, and I'm not going to deliver any of this. Um, <laughs> No, in this case, I didn't throw away somebody else's speech. I actually threw my own speech away. But I just want to say this. Um, this is a city, I just, and I, know, I hope you all feel this way. It's a city that is going to come back strong. Uh, in fact, we did a, a, a sort of seminar today for 1,500 people from around the world who are prospective investors, and they all came online. We thought we might have a couple hundred. We had 1,500 people from 50 countries. And the thing was called Stronger Than Ever. And, you know, the right stuff is here. TIFF is here, and TIFF has gone through this pandemic. And the talent pool that we have here in every field, including film, but not limited to film. The arts and cultural world, which represent the soul of this city and of this country and of people. The diversity of the city, so people can stand and, and, and watch a film or celebrate a, a, a concert together. And even if they can't speak to each other, they can, they can you know, be together. The values that we have, the values of respect and embracing each other and caring about each other, as we did throughout the pandemic. And so I just want people to kind of come through this different TIFF with a great sense of hope. This represents a great sense of hope that we're here tonight starting another festival. It's a bit different, but it's going to be great. And it represents lots more to come uh, because we're doing so well also at uh, doing what we have to do and getting vaccinated. So I want to just say thank you. Uh, to you, because I don't haven't had a chance to speak to any audiences of more than, well, the people at home, my family, they get tired of listening to me. <laughs> but in person, I haven't, like everybody else. And it's been a team effort that's got us here, and we've got a little distance yet to go, but we're going to get there, because this is the greatest city and the greatest country in the world, and I'm so proud and privileged to be its mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Tory, uh, and I love that message of hope. Um, I hope that if you are still getting used to wearing heels or hard pants, that you're still comfortable, because it's been <laughs> a while since we had to do that. Uh, but we're going to ask that of you more often, I think. Um, you know, finding an opening night film is both a challenge and an honor. And the last year and a half have been a challenge for all of us. As we were watching films over the summer, it became clear that we needed a movie that acknowledged the challenges we face in life, but that also celebrated the power of connection, of really seeing one another. And this year, one film hit all the right notes for opening night, Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> That's right. Directed by Stephen Chbosky, Dear Evan Hansen is based on the award-winning Broadway phenomenon. It stars Tony winner Ben Platt as Evan, <laughs> along with Amy Adams, Julianne Moore, Caitlin Deaver, Amanda Stenberg, Nick Dodani, uh, so many more. It is just a wonderful film. As Steve returned this year in the wake of a pandemic that has changed all of our lives, we felt it was important to open, to open this Steve 2021 with a film that connects us to our shared humanity and that reminds us how deeply we need one another and need to be seen by one another, especially in times of loneliness and uncertainty. Dear Evan Hansen is ultimately about healing and forgiveness and reaffirms how connected and essential we all are to one another. We couldn't think of a more important idea to celebrate this year as we come together once again to share the power and joy of cinema in theaters. Massive thanks to NBC Universal for bringing us this film. And now we couldn't be prouder to present the world premiere of Dear Evan Hansen. So please join me in welcoming director Stephen Chbosky, screenwriter and author of the musical, Stephen Levinson, producer Adam Siegel, <laughs> actors Colton Ryan, Danny Pino, Nick Dodani, Amanda Stenberg, Julianne Moore. Get out here, people. And the star of Dear Evan Hansen, Ben Platt. Hello, Toronto. 
I agree. Um, I, have, I have to say uh, once more for this amazing cast. Thank you. Um, so I want to thank uh, uh, a quick personal story. So nine years ago, I brought my very first studio movie. It was called The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and I premiered it. Thank you. I premiered it here at the Toronto International Film Festival, and it was a night that changed my life. It was the opening. The world premiere was right here, and I never forgot that experience. I love this city. I've had the greatest times in this city. I've been here many, many times, so it feels like coming home for me personally. But I yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't know you made it, Mom. Anyway, um, so uh, but I want to say, I thought I was thinking backstage, listening to uh, Cameron and Joanna very uh, eloquently speak, and the mayor and the minister, and I was just thinking about, wow, this is opening night. Here you all are. We've all been sequestered in our worlds uh, for a long time. It has taken a terrible toll on all of us. We all know that. But here we are with hope in our hearts, and we're here, and we're together. And that is remarkable. So I want to talk about opening night, and here it is. So a little secret you may or may not know. So we all know that Ben Platt played Evan Hansen on Broadway. I myself. Yes. Yes, he already knows that. OK. So uh, I myself never saw him perform uh, that character on stage. Um, so for me, and this goes for every member of the cast, for me, every day on set was like opening night. Every take was like being front row center, just like watching and marveling at these remarkable actors and reading Mr. Levinson's uh, amazing words and story. Um, it was an honor to be there, and the thing is, when, when we all went to Atlanta, Georgia, we were there for four months, and for all of us who traveled from out of town, we couldn't see anybody. You couldn't go out to dinner. There was no bars. We just were there. But then we would go to set, and we'd take off the mask of the visors, and this magical moment happened. And when I said, it's like every moment was like opening night. And so now, you guys get to have the bragging rights forever to say, like, you were here. Not only opening night of Dear Evan Hansen, not only opening night of TIFF, but as far as I'm concerned, the opening night of cinema in theaters in North America. You're here. So, so thank you for, for being here. Thank you so much for having us. It is an honor to be the opening night film. Um, and uh, as the, the movie said, and the reason why we all made it is just to make all of us here to finally know, and I, I love this lyric so much, to, to that we all know that you are not alone. So thank you uh, to Tiff. Thank you, all of you. And uh, I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, so I was in the original Broadway company of this show, um, and I would watch from the wings. Uh, thank you. And I, it was um, the first big professional gig of my life, and it was all of my dreams come true. Um, and that was a lot of it was because of music's been a big part of my life for most of my life, and the musicianship that comes with the quality of this material, and then you know, Ben, I mean, <laughs> um, you Recording see? in progress. Fantastic. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to talk anymore, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I feel betrayed. Um, no, but, to, but to be, a, I mean, you all saw it, but um, especially when you see it live, it is just, um, it is, it's just religious, you know? And um, I, won't, I won't go too much farther down that tooting his horn, but I will say, the thing about this movie, even me as a viewer, and something as I'm growing up loving musicals and loving musical films, is just always, I've always had that desire to, to see people just open their mouth and it, it be organic and natural, and it just flow out, just live. And just for, as I get older and I'm more in the business, I understand that's a little harder to do, but the commitment to that on this film, I think is what it made it me especially feel like as someone who's seen this show, the stage show live about like 4,000 times. Uh -huh. It was like I was there again tonight. Um, 
they all saw I was kind of pulling myself together just a second ago. <laughs> I'm still misty-eyed uh, about the whole thing. And I think it's the live aspect of it that just puts you back, just like we were there at the music box, in that congregation receiving that sort of, I don't know, I mean, communion or whatever, whatever it is for you. But like, for me, it's just, the live aspect of it was such a thrill, and um, I'm so proud to be a part of that, like lineage and everything. And I, I should say, Colton was the second Evan Hansen ever, the, like the second person to ever play that role other than Ben after three years of Ben. So it's kind of remarkable to be sitting here on stage with both of you after that journey. Yes. Well, it, it's remarkable for me because, more tooting Ben's horn, um, I learned so much just watching him. So... Um, I would, I mean, I'd even thank him. I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be on this stage if it wasn't partly um, a mentorship that he doesn't know that he uh, accepted, but, but one that I, I have um, been gladly receiving for so long. So. Are you proposing to me? <laughs> Cue it. That was the recording. They're going to get it all right here. It turns out it was gay. me <laughs> oh um it was a really special experience i don't sing um and so the music team set up private lessons for me to help <laughs> to help with 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 that and the very first uh rehearsal we had in person in atlanta it was just supposed to be me and the music director private safe space <laughs> ben walks in <laughs> Just to say hello and be nice. We hadn't met yet. And uh, the music director was like, why don't you sing together? <laughs> and uh, I had a very quiet panic attack. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember, but I basically whispered sincerely me um, that first time. Um, but Ben is the sweetest. And so it was, it was, we found a lot of like Jared and Evan chemistry off screen, which was really, really delightful. Um, and Get wow, <laughs> did you hear that? Get married already. Okay. The movie we, might we not just be gay, got but engaged. We are. <laughs> Patience, please. Come on. Uh, Stephen Levinson, uh, I wanted to ask you what it was like to see something that you had worked on for so many years and, and through that incredibly successful Tony Award winning run on Broadway, see that become a film. And also, was that a, a challenge to kind of let some of that, that control go and, and let it into the hands of the filmmakers? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was certainly a challenge and a thrill, I have to say. You know, part of the reason I think you write a musical in the first place or you know, you find out really quickly whether it's right for you is if you are into the idea of collaboration because it is such a collaborative uh, medium. And for me, this was really an extension of that. It was an opportunity to collaborate with more people, a bigger team, um, but it was certainly, I mean, it was hugely thrilling to get to see it come to life on the screen and to get to see it on this screen uh, and mostly to get to work with this company of actors, I mean, they're just, there's nobody better. And to get to see them bring this material to life was, was just, every day was a thrill and incredible, especially in those dark days of the pandemic, uh, getting to show up to work every day and, and watch them come to life was, was, was everything. Um, Steven Chbosky, I wanna ask you, you know, when we saw the film, we saw the film in June when we were putting this festival together and we were working from home and dealing with isolation, which the film very much treats. And what I loved, what we all loved, uh, those of us who saw it, was that it's really sincere in addressing how hard and how painful it can be to feel alone, to feel like you can't tell people what is in your deepest heart. Uh, and then it brings you out of that and it gives you an, a, a reason why connecting is so important. Um, 
And you know, whenever you're sincere in any art form, that, there's a risk to that. You're really putting yourself on the line. And I wanted to ask you about the tone of the film, maintaining what was already in the play, and, and just any risk you felt in terms of just you know, putting your heart out there. Um, I, didn't, I didn't particularly feel a risk with it. I, uh, you know, um, I came to it because I, I just simply love the show like a lot of other people love the show. I think Stephen's writing is brilliant, genuinely brilliant, and I loved the characters, and I thought that the language was amazing, and I thought the songs were beautiful. So there wasn't a whole lot of risk involved, I felt like, because I felt like as a fan, I was trying to make the movie for people like me, like the, like the fans. Um, and it, 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 you ask a very interesting question. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's as I'm getting older, I've made more movies. I do make emotional films. I'm not terribly apologetic about it. I'm a dude from Pittsburgh. I don't, you know what I mean? I, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and if you don't like it, fuck off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, so, um, yeah, I, there's no risk in that. There, to me, there's only reward. You know, when you, the one thing that's interesting about directing, and something I love about it so much, is that, like, so often people, like, think that you're, what you're trying to cast or crew or you're, you're putting together is you're looking for the right actor or the right this or the right that. I'm only looking for people. What is amazing about being a director is it's like you have the ultimate backstage pass. You know, I'm not doing the performances. I'm not, I'm not doing the writing. I'm not doing the music. What I'm doing is facilitating and really just celebrating, I hope supporting, brilliant people. And I get the front row center seat and I just watch it. It is remarkable to, do, to, to experience. There's no risk in that. It's just beauty. That's all it is and it's just life. Like the fact that I got to work with these amazing people day in, day out. Um, the fact that like this amazing writer, and I'm a fellow writer, so I have a special reverence for Steven, um, that we were able to work on this, you know, the script and develop it together, um, you know, with, and he, he would listen to whatever thoughts I had and the producers, and there were so many other people that are not on this stage who, who had a hand in this. To me, again, what's the risk in that? Look, if we're, here, if we're sitting in this auditorium right now, that means whatever tragedy that we might have experienced in our families for the last year and a half, we are alive. We are here. We saw art that was great and we made it. So, you know, look, sorry that my Pittsburgh is showing, but like, you know, you know what I mean? I, I, I just, it. what's the risk? We're alive, the movie rocks, this guy's a genius, these people are amazing. We're here in Toronto, here it is. <laughs> I love a little Pittsburgh. Um, as my last question for all of you, I want to ask you, not what was your favorite song in Dear Evan Hansen, but what is the song that you felt... What song did you hate? <laughs> <laughs> no. What song did you feel best express something about you? What did you most connect with? Uh, as, whether it's the music or the lyrics or the combination, what song did you connect with most? And can we go to Roma? Caitlin, are you there still? All right. I am here. Hello. Oh gosh, I I truly just love the music in this movie. It's so, it's so hard um, to pick just one because I do feel like there's so many different songs in the in the musical that represent a lot of my emotions all packed into one. Um, I'd say uh, I guess Requiem was was. Um, I think my favorite one to sing and my favorite to listen to and my favorite to watch when I saw it on Broadway. Uh, I think for, for Zoe as a, as a character, you know, she's, it's her moment to really sort of come to terms with how she's feeling and she's feeling just so, so lost and it's um, a way for her to release. But as a, as a person, as um, you know, performing that song, uh, on set, it really felt like I was releasing a lot of um, uh, built up tension and, and um, anger. And I think it was um, really helpful for me as, a, as, a, as, a, as an actor. I, I think my um, personal connection to it was that I, it was actually really amazing when I was doing the pre-records um, right before we started shooting. I, I, I really overcame like a lot of my own personal fears. Um, and I was all of a sudden like unafraid to just fall if I needed to fall or um, 
you know, I, I it was a really, really uh, eye-opening experience performing that song and then seeing it in the film um, with Danny and Amy and all of us getting to sing together in rehearsal um, it was like really, really, really special to be able um, to experience those emotions with the two of them. They're just so brilliant and I love them so much. So Requiem would probably be my my favorite because it's just a, it's such a beautifully written song and I love that, um, you know, all of the music in this musical, but but really the, the, the dialogue um, and the lyrics like blend so, so beautifully. Let's go to the rest of your screen family. Danny, do you want to go next? What song was it for you? Oh man, Caitlin just made me tear up again. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, anything that Ben Platt sings, like yes. literally anything that Ben Platt sings. Um, man, there's so many songs in this movie that the first chord plays and I'm already losing water weight, right? Like the, the tears start to, to stream. Um, man, Sincerely Me, uh, I think lifts the whole thing and it, it sets this, this movie, this show on a path of like, the high school should be fun. This should be fun. And look what we're dealing with. Um, yeah. So that always hits me. Um, so big, so small destroys me. I mean, it just, I, I can't. I, I have to crawl out of the theater after that. How did that. you get through making this movie? <laughs> These Man. were really hard on you. No, it's, 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 it's tough. And, and Colton, you know, the hope that Colton sings with uh, and knowing what happens to Connor, that that is really difficult to deal with. Uh, but if I have to pick a song that influenced me the most, <laughs> it's a song that's not even in the movie. It's uh, To Break in a Glove, which is, yeah. Which, it's, it's in the Broadway show, but uh, did not make the film, but I, I learned it because I wanted it to influence the scene that Ben and I played with the baseball glove. And, you know, that, that missed opportunity to play catch. Uh, I needed to, I have two sons, and so to understand that and to pay the price for, uh, pay the price to play that scene, I felt that learning that song was the price I had to pay to play that scene the way it deserved to be played. And so I love that song, even though no one will ever hear me sing it. Uh, <laughs> it, it lives inside of me anyway. That's, that's my really long-winded answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is really bringing something out. <laughs> so, um, I, I, Amy, I do want to go to you next. I, I kind of wanted to get a sense from the family, but maybe we'll do more of a kind of a lightning round to get a sense of just what song you, touched you, what song moved you. I Danny, messed it all up. I loved your answer. Man. You got it. I'll go fast. We loved it. We um, loved it. So, of course, so big, so small. I'm I'm a mom, and when I saw that in the theater, I I thought I'd made it through the whole show. I was really trying to be brave because I hate crying in public. And when they sang that song, I was like, you guys are just mean. That's just mean. It's so beautiful and so poignant. But in filming, I'm going with For Forever. And anyone who was there with me will attest. It was like three days. I just couldn't stop crying. I realized what the song um, meant to Cynthia and to hear, I'll start crying again, to hear Ben sing it uh, for days on end and just the depth of, of um in hope and him creating a friend for himself while he's also giving me my son. It's, it's a beautiful moment, and so I'm going for it forever. So. Thank you, Amy. Colton, yeah. what about you? Um, uh, uh, lightning. Um, waving, because it's a bop, and, um, <laughs> and because it was the first time that um, I essentially met Amy Adams where we looked across the table. Uh, I was trying to hide my face because I was weeping really bad at the first table read where everyone was meeting each other and she looked up and was like, it's okay, me too, as we both just kind of across the table. Like... So that's how I met my hero, Amy Adams. <laughs> 
Amazing. Um, Nick. Uh, the anonymous ones, for sure. Oh, nice, nice. This is a mandla song. Yeah, I mean, the idea that anxiety and depression don't always look like what we think it looks like, and there are people who are achieving great things who still struggle with that. I relate to that very much. So thank you for doing that. Woo! It's such a beautiful song. Amanda, let's go to you next. What song, maybe it is the anonymous ones or another one that, that really um, you connected with? I'm not about to say my own song. <laughs> Crazy. You can say your own song. It's all right. Um, my answer changes every time, but I think today I'll say for forever as well. Um, because seeing that imaginary relationship between Connor and Evan just really murders me. Um, these people who are both so in need of connection and love and, and this imaginary scenario in which they find it is like what I hope for everybody. Um, and so, yeah, it just really moves me and I hope that this film provides that space and the opportunity for people to feel seen and not alone and to find friendship. Um, and yeah, to feel loved by it. Um, so yeah, for forever today. Beautiful. I love you. Julianne, you can also <laughs> say your own song if you want. Was it, <laughs> was it the one you sing? It's hard to, it's hard to not relate to So Big, So Small because it's the ultimate mom song, right? I mean, to be able to, to tell your child that you'll never leave them ever. And so, so for me, it's of course really personally, you know, really, really resonant. And it feels like a monologue, which I understand it was initially, and then that, that Stephen wrote, and then they turned into this song. So that, but I also want to say if I could tell her, because my daughter, when she hears that song, always looks at me, because she's 19 years old, and I think it's really resonant for her that someone is singing about how much he loves a girl. And it's really, it, it really touches me that she looks at me that way, because she feels seen when she hears that song. And I, and I love that, I love that about it. So. All right, I think it's probably the hardest question for the two uh, I've left to the last, Stephen and Ben. Is there one song that you feel touches you the most? For me in this experience, you know, I had a lot of time with these songs over the years, um, and they've sort of <laughs> seeped into my skin. Um, but for me, the discovery of this experience was a little closer, which is the last song that Connor sings. I think I deal with a lot of anxiety myself, and things can feel very overwhelming and sort of insurmountable. And there's something like kind of revolutionary in the hope of that sentiment of that song, of just like all that matters is that it's a little bit, just a little increment of positivity or hope or forward movement. It doesn't need to be leaps and bounds. You don't have to tackle everything at once. And I've found that, you know, in the months since then, if there's ever been times when I've needed a message like that, I've returned to that song. And I think it's particularly powerful, as Danny was saying, because it's from the most unlikely source of this character who we know eventually reached a point where they had no hope left and there was, they were full of despair. To know that someone like that can even feel those sentiments at some point and can offer that message of hope for the people that are left behind, I feel like is incredibly powerful. And it's my, probably my favorite addition um, in terms of the difference from, this, from the stage to the screen. So I'd say that song. And Colton sings it so, so beautifully. Yes, he does. You know, I, I, I was thinking tonight, I, when I started working on this musical with Benj and Justin, I was much closer to the age of Evan than I am now. Um, and uh, in the process of making this musical and in making this film, I now have two kids of my own. And I, I feel like there's something, I've gone from really understanding the kids in this and to feeling like that's who I am in this story to sort of understanding the parents better. And there's something about, not to make it sound too grand, but I think with art in general, there's something about how it can reach you at different points in your life and you can connect with it in different ways. And there's something really powerful about that and the, the circle of it and the cycle. And um, that's just really profound. And so, yeah. Thank you. And Stephen, yeah. your last. Um, you know, what, what's great about making a movie is, you, you know, uh, in editing, you watch it probably 300 times. And every time it's a little bit different. And so it's impossible to pick a favorite song. They're all great. Um, it's, it's like impossible to pick a favorite actor. They're all great. Or a favorite child. 
Both of mine are great. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I will say, but I will say, I, I'll share a moment. It's really a moment. And every actor here had something akin to this moment, whether it was funny or it was moving or whatever it was. Um, you know, because I could go on and on about crying when Caitlin auditioned with Only Us, um, uh, which was amazing, or, or watching them sing in the bedroom. But I, I'll take it down to this one moment. So it was day two of shooting, and the song was Words Fail, which no one's mentioned. Um, and Words Fail got me tonight. I was up there uh, watching, and I was just like, oh, God, this poor kid. He's just, like, confessing. And it just, I remember, I remember being in the woods, um, and I'd heard, because I'd never seen Ben perform it, uh, perform that song live. I'd heard it, but I'd never seen it. And I heard this remarkable thing about him. It was kind of legendary in Broadway already. I was like, oh, yeah, this guy, man. He, you know, I heard it. It's like, I didn't know anything about you. It was like, oh, th this guy, he can, like, have a breakdown and then sing with an open throat, and then he can, like, cry, and then he can sing delicately. And it's like, it's like physiologically impossible what this <laughs> he does. And, and so I, I heard about it. And so I was like, well... And I talked to Ben, I was like, what do you need? How can I make it a nice atmosphere? How can I be supportive? What do you need? So we, we kind of scheduled the day to, to be a certain way, to sing the, that final part where he does that thing at the tree. And when I saw it for the first time, and the, and the crane went backwards, and it was like, I was like, thank God I had the bottle in the right place, because here comes the lightning, right? And it was remarkable. So for me, even though there is no favorite song, like there is no favorite actor, I, like in terms of like a moment that I'll never forget as long as I live, was watching this young man sing that way live in those woods, because that's what you guys saw. You know, you saw take four for whatever it's worth. That was take four. But from the very first moment, it was so remarkable, and I think it'll probably always be my favorite moment um, in the movie. Um, it's, and forget about the fact that, you know, You Will Be Found, which is another amazing song. And when, when he finally finished performing it, that you gave me your cast. I'll, I'll never forget as long as I live. Anyway, so there is no favorite song. They're all wonderful. These actors are wonderful. And Ben Platt, you are uh, a, a physiological anomaly. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I want to just ask you, I mean, we're out of time, but please join me in thanking this amazing team behind Dear Evan Hansen. Director Stephen Chabosky, writer Stephen Levinson, Colton Ryan, Danny Pino, Nick Dodani, Amanda Stenberg, Julianne Moore, star Ben Platt, and joining us remotely, Amy Adams and Caitlin Deaver. Thank you all. <laughs>